In this video, we're forging copper, not signatures. Hi, I'm James, and we're here at the University of North Texas Metalsmithing and Jewelry Studio. This video is going to go over the forging of copper or non-ferrous materials. Uh, blacksmithing that you might have heard of is usually associated with steel or iron, that's the, the black part of it, and it's done hot because of the way that uh, steels work. With copper, since it can be annealed and softened and just ready to work at any time, it's a slightly different process. So this video will cover just the basics of forging copper and we'll be covering tapering, which is taking the cross section and kind of making it skinnier and skinnier and coming to a point. And then also uh, spreading, which is just uh, taking the cross section and spreading it out flatter. And then also we're gonna be dealing with upsetting, which is taking the end and kind of flaring it out which is typically done for rivets and, and uh, other kinds of cold joining. So we'll be covering those three basic techniques. If you're interested, there's some other really great resources. Uh, Alan Revere has a really wonderful book on bench tips, and he goes over uh, what we're gonna do with step rolling. We're gonna go over the rolling mill and do that. And then also on my website, I've collected a bunch of different handouts on forging uh, in my ultimate PDF handout set. So you can always uh, download that for free and it goes through all these different handouts that are more specific to forging. So to start off with tapering, you need basically the, the sides to be a square. And you can do that manually by taking a forging hammer and an anvil and then tapping through and making it square. What I find particularly for beginners is that it's really necessary to keep that, that square even and beginners aren't so good and then it can start becoming off to the side and be like a diamond and then it doesn't forge as well and everybody gets frustrated and unhappy. So what I found the best way to do is to use a rolling mill, the wire side of it, and you can roll the round copper rods down into a square cross section and that makes it a whole lot easier to forge. So we're gonna go over to the rolling mill and I'll show you how that's done. So this is a rolling mill and we have both a power and a manual rolling mill here at uh, UNT. This can only be done with a manual one because you need to control how you're rolling the metal through. Uh, so I'm going to use the, uh, the wire part of the rolling mill and I do have another video on using the rolling mill for texture so you could check that one out too. And what I want to do is just get this round copper rod square so that we can forge it easier. So I have a little marker for where I'm starting from. And uh, the most important thing is you just want to keep your fingers out of these rolls. So it's right here. And this is already annealed, so it's nice and soft. Roll it through. And you're going to have to go down a couple sections. It'll start kind of making just some facets on the piece. You want to keep those lined up. Keep rolling it through until it's square. So you can still see some of the corners are rounded. You can use this nice handy dandy marker. And you just don't want to pinch the metal because you'll start getting weird wings coming off of it. So you just want to be have it nice and square for forging. And since we're going to be hammering on it a lot more, that's probably enough. You can still see some flats on the corners. Uh, but if I roll it more, it might pinch you, which I'll just give it a shot and see. Maybe I'll demonstrate what I mean. You can see here, hopefully, that there's just this little piece of metal that's starting to get squeezed out there. And if that does happen to your metal, you just want to go and you just want to file that off. Because while you're forging, it'll fold over and just get kind of ragged and, and cause some problems. So that's how to get started, you can just roll all of your uh, rod down so it's nice and square and then you can get to forging on it. Uh, now I'm going to show you what uh, the little bench tip from Alan Revere about step rolling to help the transitions with your taper. Okay, so for step rolling, what you're going to do is get it all the way square and then work down to the smaller areas but not roll it all the way through so that it starts forming that taper for you. So I'll just start here. All right. 
Okay, so we've got it all the way square and we could start forging on this after we anneal it again. But what I'm gonna do is just start rolling it part way. So mark that and I'm gonna roll about halfway through and then back it out. And you might not be seeing it yet, but it's starting to get skinnier. And so you can certainly do this all with a hammer, but particularly for beginners, it helps with control to sort of be able to do it a little bit slower and in a more controlled this, this way. So then I'll move down and then roll half as far. You can see it's starting to get longer as it gets skinnier in cross section. And then this end is even skinnier. So again, I'm gonna move on down and then just roll it down a little bit, about half as far as I did before. Back it out. You can see it's getting significantly skinnier from the, the beginning. And if you're not sure, particularly if it's silver, you can always uh, anneal it to make sure that your metal's not gonna crack. Uh, but this is copper and we're just taking it down a little bit so we can just keep going with it. And you're usually kind of rolling half as far as you did before. And it just really kind of is a nice guide for that taper. And this I think is the last one I'm going to do here for the video. It gets much skinnier, it's going to start sort of splitting and everything. So, so hopefully you can see those little steps as you're rolling down and this will just be a nice starting point. So just for this demo, what I'm going to do is round this out and you'll see how it's a nice long gradual taper when we go back to the anvil. All right, so you can see through that, uh, putting it through the rolling mill, that as you're decreasing the cross section of the metal, it is gonna get longer. So you can see going from round to square, that it's gotten a bit longer, but also smaller in cross section. So keep that in mind in your designs. And then with the step rolling, since we're getting even skinnier out here, you can see it's starting to get even longer. So um, this is probably a good enough taper just to illustrate uh, the, the process. So what I'm gonna do, there, there's two ways then to sort of round this off. One would be uh, filing and sanding it down, which uh, you could certainly do, but I, I find that it's more efficient both in, in time and material to get it as rounded as you can through actually hammer forging and then uh, refining it if you need to with files or anything. So we'll just go on the horn of the anvil and this is a slightly curved surface. So that'll be sort of pinching and smoothing the metal as well. You can use the face of the anvil if you just, if you don't want to change the cross section at all and you just want to start rounding it out. But basically what you're doing, if you think of kind of the square, that this is all a series of smaller and smaller squares, is that you just want to round over those facets and get it back into a circular cross section. So I know it seems crazy, like, well, why can't we just forge it round? But the way that these tools work when you're hitting it with a, a hammer and the anvil is hitting back on the underside, that it really needs the balance of that square to control the force. Like if you were trying to do this with just a round wire, it's just gonna flatten it and you're not gonna get kind of a decreased tapered cross section. And then you need a little bit more force as the cross section gets bigger. And again, you spend more time here being careful, then there's gonna be less time filing and sanding. And as you can see with copper, since you don't have to work it hot like you do with steel, you could just hold it with your hands. There's no rush, you're not losing the heat. Uh, but as you continue to hammer on the copper, it is gonna get harder and harder. So at some point, depending how much forming and forging you're doing, you might want to anneal the copper again. So I'm just kind of spinning it around, trying to evenly work out any of those facets. And then depending on the final finish that you want on the piece, if you like 
the uh, kind of hammered finish, then you could keep that as long as your taper is nice and controlled. Or uh, if you want a nice smooth finish, then you would definitely want to go back in with files. So that's just the start, but you get the general principle of how tapering works. And uh, now I'm going to get into some other techniques to show you. So now we're going to get into spreading, which it can be used in a wide variety of different ways. This is a great little demo piece that Ellen Durkin, a famous blacksmith, did when she was here as a visiting artist. And you can see the combination of tapering and then spreading on some different parts of this, uh, this demonstration piece that she made. And uh, well, again, this is in steel, but the principles are all the same. So with copper, uh, just have a, a basic rod here and with spreading what you want to do is you can use the cross peen of the hammer and that's going to get into the metal and force it to spread perpendicular to this line of the cross peen. So when you hit it here, it's going to spread out that way. Uh, you can either use it on the, the face of the anvil or you can uh, further exaggerate it by using the horn of the anvil. Just for simplicity, we'll just do this here. And so this is both decreasing the cross section of the metal and spreading it out. So it's getting flatter and longer. And then again, as far as deciding when you're done with a technique, it just depends on the aesthetics that you need to do of the piece. So you can see it's starting to flatten out. A lot of um, curves and forging, I think about the sort of lyrical way with calligraphy and you have variation of line weight and I think being really sensitive to the line weight of the metal and thinking about how you're almost drawing in space is a great way to have uh, smooth transitions within your piece as well as uh, nicely controlled designs. So I'm just going to planish or flatten out some of the cross peen markings. And you can see just how that starts spreading out. In uh, this example, just using the spreading on one side of the piece to have it moving out that way. Uh, but it's a very simple but versatile technique that you can use for uh, lots of different design elements. So this last technique we're gonna cover is called upsetting. And that's really just taking the end of the stock and flaring it out. So this is typically done for different cold joining processes like riveting or capturing metal together. For the sake of this demo, uh, I'm just going to upset the end of this copper. And what I've done is I have a, a brass tube that will keep the copper straight while I'm just hammering on the end. So uh, with upsetting, you want to use generally a round faced hammer because when it strikes the metal, it's going to move the metal out from the center of the strike evenly all the way around. You could use a cross peen. And if you upset with a cross peen, what's going to happen is the metal again is going to move perpendicular to that cross peen. So if I hit it this way, the metal will move out sort of in an oval that way and that way. So uh, just for the, the sake of this demo, I'll get, get this started just with a, um, a round faced hammer and you want to hit it nice and straight. And what you can hopefully see is that head of the metal starting to flare out. So you could do this as, um, as a, uh, a way of cold joining or riveting, or it could just be a design element. So I'll just kind of keep going with it, just so exaggerate it and illustrate it even better. And again, this is all annealed copper. So you can start seeing it just kind of flaring out there. And that's just uh, the basics of an upsetting technique. So those are the basics of non-ferrous forging. We're working with annealed copper today and just covering some basic tapering, some spreading and some upsetting, but hopefully that gets you started. And the great thing with working with copper as opposed to uh, blacksmithing with steel is that there's no rush, the copper is annealed, you can work on it, you can think about what you're doing, work on it some more, uh, anneal it whenever you need to. So it's a nice, it's a bit of a slower process, particularly for beginners. Uh, this is what we introduce first so you can get the, the sense of how hammer working with the material works and how it's moving as you're striking it. So hope this is a great intro to you and that you have fun. 
If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can hear from me when I post future videos. Thanks for stopping by.